to Nigeria now on Echo Television International. We will be keeping you updated with the happenings, what is happening. Just recently, we've heard that the tribunal have actually sacked the Plateau State um, Speaker Moses Sule based on the fact that his party, the PDP, did not have a legal structure when he actually got dominated into the seat as a speaker. So presently, his um, certificate has been withdrawn. This is what INEC have said. So we'll keep you with all of the details subsequently sequentially as they continue to drop. I am Sela Elisha Dasham and I'll be doing this alongside Rachel Tanzi. Rachel, good afternoon. Afternoon, Sarah. How are you doing? I'm fine. How about you? Great. Thank you so much. You see, we've been beginning to see the court is taking up its responsibility. I mean, no wonder we saw the Chief Justice saying that the court is having, it seems as if they're so having much. so much actually. Yes, that we are seeing that the Chief Justice are even limited. Yeah. But then, just like we've seen, even in the Delta stage recently, we've had that the tribunal has also stated the fact that um, the governor has been reaffirmed and so that um, petition being filed by Omar Gigi has been kicked out of the court. So we're seeing that everything is falling in shape and other states subsequently will begin to hear tribunals coming in left, right and center for people who submitted their petition. But our fingers are crossed as they keep um, dropping. We'll let the viewers know on that. Now let's get to the issue on siege right now. Still talking about responsibility, accountability. Today we woke up to the news of what happened yesterday mm -hmm. at the Ministry of um, Works, mm -hmm. where we saw the, minis the Minister of Works actually locking workers outside of the vicinity. And according to reports that came in, the fact that he came into that office at around 9.30, and then the, uh, the gate was locked for over four hours. Mm -hmm. In fact, it got to the point that there was protest. Mm -hmm. Some people who were... Um, Worshippers had their mat in front of the gate, worshipping. And according to the people, when they were able to get in touch with the security agent in charge of there, he said he was given a directive mm -hmm. by the minister. And a protest, just like I said, a protest yes. erupted. The, even the governor of Lagos State, who came for a court service, was unable to get mm -hmm. into the office. But then he actually apologized, according to reports. He apologized and said he was going to look into some of the reasons why they came to work late because they said some of them are living outside the city center mm -hmm. so they have to make it to work and all of that they listed the fact that the hardship we know the way transportation is and all of that but then beyond that Rachel I'm not just looking at it for well, the minutes the Ministry of Works and Housing but we're looking at workers relationship with the government or with their employers with the way things are moving, we're seeing that quite a lot is happening when you look at, especially civil servant, we've been talking about over and over the fact that things are becoming very difficult. And this is one of the reasons we are having these workers complaining that that's why they came to work that late. So quite a lot when you look at the whole thing, the protests, even though things, was, um, things eventually become normal later on. But then you begin to see that these are part of the things that everybody is going through getting to work, making it late, and then you have to face the consequences for actually making it late to work eventually. I mean, you said, like, to be honest, these are things happening to people, but they are not good enough excused for you to be one hour, 30 minutes late to work because he arrived 9.30 and you are arriving after him. So it means we have those who probably came two hours late or more. We, of course, we don't have details of when yeah, everybody it, arrives. So yes, and we know that working hours, except if it's different in the Ministry of Works, but it's 8 o'clock, civil servants resume work and we close 4 o'clock. That's how it is virtually everywhere in Nigeria. But then except if the Ministry of Work is different and maybe they resume 9 and we can say they are 30 minutes late, in as much whatever minute late you are, you are very late. And I know that there is hardship in the country, Sele, but then hardship is no excuse for you to be late to work either way because you know what? It's the same minute. Um, if 
Well, if your taxi price changes from 200 to 400, it doesn't change the kilometers you cover. It doesn't change the speed of the vehicle. It doesn't change the kilometers you cover. If I'm living at Old Airport, coming down here to walk, it doesn't, um, just because there is fuel subsidy removal, fuel pump price have gone high, it doesn't change that it's 15 minutes that would take me from Old Airport down here to walk, for instance. So yes, it's not enough reason. And then even if we will go down back to saying, okay, a lot of people live outside the city center. Um, there are a lot of people living outside the city center and still made it to work early. A lot of people, those that happen to be in the office before the, um, the minister showed up also live outside the city yes no there will be those two that would live outside the city center and there are those two who uh, who live in the city center and were late too so is that really an excuse i'm just trying to come from an angle that um no this is not an excuse for you to be late to work whatsoever all the all the reasons they mentioned are not good enough reasons for you to be late to be that late to work in whatsoever it's not because we have people who live also, as I, we have states like Lagos that people live far away and then they wake up and they go there. This happens in busy states all, all around the world. Any, any state that is busy or when housing is difficult and people have to live outside the city center, you find out that it is normal like that, but then you don't have an excuse to come late. Um, however, I keep saying that. I didn't keep saying it though, but when I saw it, what came to my mind was that there should have been a better way for the minister to go about it because I feel this measure feels um, old school in a little bit and then it made maybe... Um, sorry to, to cut you short there, Richard. Over the years, we've seen the issue of ghost workers, even at the federal level, mm -hmm. where we see people claiming to be workers and actually... They are just there, maybe coming to work maybe six or five times in a year mm -hmm. or subsequently. And then these are the same people that will be asking for their salary if it's not being paid. Now, am I saying that the right step, this is the right step the, the minister should have taken? Possibly he felt that was the first way forward to actually address issues, especially when it comes to that of them being laid and then he closing the door. We're talking about over 300 you know, workers were locked outside. And just like you rightly stated, Richard, there are people that were living outside the city center. Now, what actually baffled me the most, Richard, is the fact that even after the gate was open, they refused to go exactly. inside. Rather, they started to protest. Now, what was the protest all about? Because it wasn't just workers. We're even talking about some directors were part of them. Now, it began to show you some of the habit workers have towards exactly. work or it's also telling some of the way that is why it's all about employers and employees um, behavior towards work are people complying to certain rules and regulation being set at work this is number one and then another thing again we have to look at the fact is that there's something in the civil po or the public service that we call reward system that when somebody does something right, you reward him. And when he does something that is wrong, there is a punishment attached to it. Now, for those who have been coming to work early, I remember there was a time where we saw an award was given to a teacher because she was at work early. That was even before the cleaners could make it to work. Now, sometimes people feel as if, if they are not being rewarded for what they are being done, especially when you're looking at the issue of the increase of wealth subsidy, a lot of people will want to bank on that and say that because there is scarcity of wealth or because there is a hike, we will make it to work late. And just like you said, it doesn't change the speed, neither does it change the distance you have to cover to work. But I think it's important so that we do not have a misunderstanding between workers and also those who they have employed, I th although the employers rather. I think it is important that everybody comes together and say, what is the way forward? Just like the minister said, he said, all he wanted them is that they should not get into strike come October 3rd. Now we see Rachel, we're getting somewhere. Locking the gate was not just because they are late, but there was a need for an attention to address a particular thing that was on ground. So if you ask me, I think, both parties eventually shared or will I say not really he is the minister so he has the right to come in and see how things are being done cross check and all of that but just like we said there should be better way to address things and when you say things like this I hope that this will serve as 
leave an eye opener or a way for workers to take their jobs more seriously. The fact that this work or you are a worker of the government doesn't mean that you should treat the work carelessly. We see that most of these workers have some of their private businesses and they do not treat it the same way they treat the government work. Maybe you say the work the government will treat you right. But I think, just like I keep saying over and over, is that it's not all about the government. But as citizens, as workers, what are you hoping to do there? If I were here in the office, what do you do from 9 to 4? Or from eight to four it also tells the lord whether you are giving back to the community or giving back to your place of work or not so we just hope with all of these things that have happened richard i hope that we'll not hear another protest again in another ministry because the workers were late or they actually came to work late and all of that now i, I mentioned the fact that the minister even still mentioned the fact that of the strike now this takes us to the next issue recently there was a meeting where we have the National Economic Commission having a meeting. Mostly it's made up of the governors and also it's mostly chaired by the vice president himself. And yesterday they met together to see some of the things that they can talk about, how Nigeria can be better, re-evaluating things, setting their priorities right as an administration. And then one of the things they mentioned is the fact that labor should not go on that strike. They should try as much as possible to shelve that strike. We saw it from yesterday when the federal government were telling them to give them time. They will meet with them on Tuesday. And they were saying that um, one of the governors that spoke with um, correspondent yesterday happened to be the governor of Plateau State, Caleb Mutran. And he mentioned the fact that right now all they want labor to do is that they should meet at the state level. So they will be able to liaise properly, negotiate proper, and then talk things out. Because right now, with the way things are, a lot of things are not going well. In fact, some of the governors that came in, about 28 of them or so, are freshly being elected. So some of them came and met empty treasury. Some of them, their workers went on strike and are just coming back. So it's more like taking them another 10 step backward again. But then, Rachel, in your own opinion or in your own perspective what will you tell about what neck is telling them because we're saying that not only is labor going nupek are joining them taka drivers are joining we're saying that if things are not even going we eventually we hear airports bank and the rest of yes. it joining them. so what is the way forward right now well Sela, the way forward is for the government to act is action Sela. like if you don't want them to go on the strike act and I keep saying it that this is why, um, regardless of how decentralized our system of government is, whether we like it or not, there are still big economic decisions and policy that when taken at the federal government level, if, if it's not implemented rightly, we will see the effect at the state government level. And then we keep saying, what are even the rationale? We, we talked about it when it came to um, the five billion naira palliative and the five. I said, what is the mathematics that the government used to share this palliative when we have states with different population, states with different poverty level and all of that? What did you use? Because in the end, even if this five billion gets to um, this state eventually and the trucks of rice gets eventually, the impact will be different in some states will benefit from it better and some state won't. So when you look at it in a lot of ways, even the formula from the federal government is not even good enough when you take it down to the state government level. And I believe that governors will try to talk to NLC at the state level, telling them this, 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 and that. But let's not forget that NLC have put it out there that this is just what we need you to do. At least start with something. If you say 200,000 minimum, which is outrageous, what about the palliative? What about the palliative? What is stopping it? How is it taking long? Why is this not yet ruling out and all of that? And we know because labor is coming from a position knowing fully well the capacity of the Nigerian government exactly. They know that this is something that by now the Nigerian government should be able to start doing something about it. Okay, what about the refineries? You are saving because they ask the government to... Um, to um, give account for what they're doing with the savings from the subsidy removal money and you told us that this is how much we, we saw that coming from the nnpcl boss himself saying that this is how much we spent 
in subsidy uh, payment now if it's been removed this is how much we are able to save and by now everybody can calculate it and say okay this is how much we have because one of the things labor is saying is that get refineries running we have enough to start having some refineries running by now and we are not seeing anything so the way forward is action because even as um, the federal government keeps saying labor is going against court order labor is going against this and they're trying to use the court order and when you look at it it's not substantial in a lot of ways because when you get this restraining order the fifth it's meant for a hearing in the 19th and then nothing happened and then you use an expert that is you are now giving an order that doesn't give the other party enough time to be able to give a response and all of that and when you look at it is is it doesn't even have grounds in the first place because when the when when the court gave this thing is for you to be able to act on your own side to be able to have the sitting the uh, the following week um, ahead and be able to come to an agreement and you didn't even keep to your own side of the bargain in in giving that restraining order and all of that so you find out that the federal government is not doing what what they're supposed to do sell it even as at now they are beating around the bush and i believe that that is the problem because what you need to do is out there but you're still not doing that you're insisting on just going round and round the issue when what you're supposed to do is obviously out there well i think rachel we we'll just have to wait for 1st we'll October. Have the president wait. promised to unveil a package. And I know that every Nigerian is looking forward exactly. to the Independence Day yes. to hear what that package is. So thank you so much, Rachel, for doing this with me. Thank you to our viewers. Thank you to our supporters for keeping a date with us on Nigerian. Now, until we come here again next week, do have a blessed weekend here.